As long ago as 1969, John Michel was associating sacred sites with geological faulting, but more by intuitive observation than anything else. The lie of the land surrounding most Stern's stone circles gives the secret away. McCartney's work has now been able to confirm this earlier suspicion. Uh, this is actually a Paul McCartney, but not the Beatle Paul McCartney, <laughs> or the substitute stand-in uh, for Paul McCartney. <laughs> um, but this one is a geologist, okay? All right. So anyways, McCartney's work has now been able to confirm this earlier suspicion. From the work he has currently done on stone circle distribution in England and Wales, McCartney is satisfied that every stone circle in those two countries is within a mile of a surface fault or lies on an, in, an associated intrusion. Hmm. An intrusion uh, is a, essentially a, a fracture in the Earth's surface that has allowed an upwelling of magma from deep within the lithosphere. That would be an intrusion because the material of the, of the lower lithosphere or asthenosphere even is intruding up into the crust, you see. Yeah. He goes on to say, there are enough examples to show that the ancients did not necessarily cite their structures within easy reach of the stones they wanted. There simply cannot be any doubt that place was paramount to the megalithic builders. It so happened that the requirements for their places occurred in heavily faulted or intruded areas. And that is a clue not to be missed. Right. Isn't it also true that there a lot of sites were sometimes over aquifers or underground flows of water? Well, yes, because, Russ, think about this. Um, the underground water, how is it going to, how is it going to, move through the through the lithosphere it's the going falls. to it's going to use the fractures and fault lines so the wherever there's a fracture it's likely that you would have that would be the the conduit through which the 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 subsurface the 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 hydrosphere is moving under pressure uh -huh. and bear in mind also that, that that you know the astronomical component is is that just as the oceans are subject to gravitational forces that yield the, the tides the obviously visible tides the hydrosphere is is tidal as well and so there are subterranean forces that wax and wane with the moon and with the the relative distance between the moon and the earth the earth and the sun the planets and so on and so you actually have this this ebbing and flowing of of subterranean tidal forces as well so this could play into it because there may be times where pressures increase cyclically because of perhaps the relative positions of the, the moon or the sun, and then those pressures diminish. When the pressures increase, now this is when you may have what uh, the, the unusual, uh, the transient events, the yeah. unusual and transient events um, that may or may not actually lead, like it said, when the quantal levels are reached and, and the seismic rupture occurs, right? That's only the final final act of this process of this this pressure building this stress building process you see but you may have a buildup of stress and then a release of that stress without it actually causing a seismic event but the, the building up of that stress now can induce the changes in the electromagnetic field that would be the point see so now if you are building structures and see this is where we may be getting into the science of this thing they may have known how to design structures that were somehow able to concentrate or amplify or magnify or somehow exploit these changing energy fields yeah mm -hmm. man <sighs> and that's kind of the key to all power plants really is is exploiting some type of natural changing, you know, energy. Yeah, a potential that's there that's right. because of this differential. Yes, whether it's whether it's water that's basically being picked up off of the ocean by the sun, and you know, the heat from mountains. the sun dumped onto the mountains and then flowing back into the ocean, we're exploiting that movement and transducing it into a different type of power. So it uh -huh. makes no sense like the the tidal uh, flows of the of the aquifers putting pressure on the you know crystalline structures in the ground creating these piezo piezoelectric fields. Yeah. 
<laughs> but, no, yeah, no, one, one more to finish up this quote from Paul Devereaux here. Scotland, of course, possesses the huge, ancient, great Glen Fault. Naturally, we are by now not surprised to learn that megalithic sites abound in the region. Around the northeast eastern end of the fault, there are over 50 chambered cairns, including the famous Clava Barrows. Most megaliths congregate around each end of the fault. But it is interesting to note that over the last few years, archaeologists have come to think that the waters of Loch Ness, occupying most of the fault, cover long submerged stone circles. Hmm. And here we have something interesting because, again, remember the idea that, that these uh, electrical field columns might actually impinge upon the hippocampus of the brain, inducing visions, inducing who knows what. Certainly they've been associated with the perception of, of audible sounds, with luminosities. Could they possibly be associated with, uh, could these transient events include sightings of, you know, things that somebody interprets as a lake monster, yep. but only occurs during certain intervals when the forces are aligned correctly. Right. Uh, this is purely conjecture, of course, but I think it's, it, it would be worth looking at further. Um, because, yeah, the Great Glen, um, which is this fracture that crosses Scotland, is occupied by Loch Ness, which, of course, is world famous for being... Um, you know, the yeah. home of, of nasty, but, you know, interestingly as a side, <clears throat> you know, when you begin to look at all of these various lakes that have these monster um, myths and, and legends associated with them, they're pretty much all formed in this, in a very similar way. Okay. So Lake Okanagan up in British Columbia, you've got Ogopogo, right? The formation of, of Lake Okanagan and Loch Ness are almost identical. <laughs> we had major glaciated valleys that were then subject to catastrophic meltdown and catastrophic erosion, huge deposits of sediment onto the bottom of these deeply eroded troughs and then filled up with glacial meltwater. When you look at uh, Champy, um, the, uh, the, the lake monster associated with Lake Champlain, same thing, same origin for that. Um, Flathead Lake monster, again, in Montana. There's a flathead lake monster, big old flathead lake, same genesis as all of these other lakes. I've often wondered about that, that all of these lakes that have the lake monsters all formed in basically the same way. They were glaciated valleys that were carved by the glaciers and then underwent catastrophic melting. You see? Yeah. Recent sighting of Ogopogo, by the way, best best video ever ever obtained of Ogopogo in the last in the last month or two. Yeah, I just okay. saw it a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to send that if I can find it. Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome because when we were up there, we were we went to a bluff overlooking the lake, and we're standing up there talking, and there's a big V wake <laughs> moving across the lake, and we're standing like a bunch of you know, I don't know what it was. Were we <laughs> or half asleep or what was the problem? We were standing there. And then afterwards we were going, well, something was making this huge wake going across the lake. Yeah. Yep. And it yep. wasn't a boat. It was something, but we couldn't really see what it was. It was just um, a legend, Randall. Legends make huge wakes in lakes. Haven't you heard that? <laughs> <laughs> huge wakes in lakes. <laughs> yeah. And, and it never fails. That's when the battery was dead. So oh, the right. camera was not working. Of course. You know? Now, see, that may not be a coincidence. That's right. Within this, what we're talking about here, the fact that the batteries yeah. might be dead might be part of the whole phenomena. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. That electric field just zapped your batteries, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 